Welcome aboard Alex's Animal Ark. My name is Alex and I will be your guide to all the amazing animals that live on our planet. Today we will be learning about the giant anteater. So what exactly is a giant anteater? To start with, they're the largest of the four anteater species. They can reach lengths between six and eight feet, which includes their noses and tails. The females weigh between 60 and 104 pounds and the, way, the males weigh between 73 and 110 pounds. Their body is covered in thick, bushy hair that comes in various shades of brown with black stripes that run down to their spine. They also have a mane running down their spine. Their front legs are white and they have a large, bushy tail. Their eyes and ears are very small. The defining characteristic of the giant anteater is their very long tubular snout with nostrils found on the end of it. In fact, their head reaches a length of 12 inches or one foot. Unfortunately, giant anteaters do not have any teeth and they can't open their mouths very wide. However, they are able to open their mouths just enough for their two foot sticky tongue to move in and out to eat the ants and termites. They are able to accomplish this thanks to the rotation of both halves of their lower jaw. Their tongue can extend 18 inches past the length of their snout, and it can move in and out of their mouth at 160 times per minute, or three times a second. Some of their throat muscles and other apparatuses are very specialized and give them the ability to flick their tongue really quickly, while also making sure their prey can't escape once the ants and termites are slurped up. Their necks are very thick, and they have a hump behind their neck. Another thing giant anteaters are known for are the large claws on their feet they use to break into termite and ant mounds. To preserve their front claws, they tuck them in, into their palms and walk on their knuckles like gorillas do. Their back claws and feet are more similar to bear claws and feet, which means giant anteaters use their back feet normally. When threatened and cornered either by humans or their predators, which are pumas and jaguars, Giant anteaters rear up on their hind legs and slash at the attacker with their claws. This can cause serious injury or even death. Giant anteaters have stomachs very similar to gizzards found in birds. Inside their stomach are hardened skin folds, and the contractions of their stomach help grind up the ants and termites, along with ingested sand and soil. They don't produce their own stomach acid, and instead use the formic acid from the ants and termites they eat. It would be really unpleasant to be digested using acid you naturally create. Giant anteaters normally walk at a slow shuffling pace, but if they need to, they can gallop at a pace of 30 miles an hour. They can also climb and swim really well. So where can you find giant anteaters? Giant anteaters are mostly found in tropical moist forests, dry forests, savannas, and open grasslands. Their range includes most of Central and South America, from Honduras to the Gran Grand or Dry Chaco region of South America, and unfortunately they are no longer found in Uruguay, Belize, El Salvador, and Guatemala. So what are some giant anteater behaviors? Giant anteaters can be both diurnal or nocturnal. If there's more human activity around them, then they are nocturnal. If there isn't a lot of human activity around them, then they are diurnal. When resting, they usually hide in thick brush and dig out a shallow cavity where they sleep with their tail above their head. Giant anteaters are insectivores. Their diet consists of both ants and termites, but, to, to, but depending on their habitat and the season, giant anteaters will either eat more ants or more termites. To find the termite or ant mounds, Giant anteaters use their awesome noses to follow the smell of ants or termites. Once they reach a mound, they rip it open using their massive claws, 
and start licking up the bugs with their long tongue. They typically spend only a minute at each mound to reduce the chances of the ants or termites attacking them. This means they will visit up to 200 mounds per foraging session and eat up to 30,000 ants or termites a day. Giant anteaters get most of the, their water from the food they eat, though sometimes they may dig for water, which creates water holes for other animals. They are usually solitary and come together for mating. Their home ranges vary in size from 2.7 square kilometers to 32.5 square kilometers, but again, this depends on where they live and their environment. The males can be territorial and may end up fighting other males that wander into their ranges. The females are not very territorial and tolerate other females. Breeding season is usually between March and May, but can take place at any time. Males will follow females around if they are in season and will spend several days together and even eat out of the eat out of the same mounds during that time. Their gestation lasts about 190 days, and females give birth to usually one pup while standing upright. After birth, the baby will climb on its mother's back, where it will spend a year or so. During this time, the baby will suckle on the nipples found in their mother's chest for three to six months, and then will be weaned at that point. Finally, the baby will leave its mother at two years of age. Giant anteaters communicate through scent marking from their anal glands and also through urine and marks on trees made with their claws. And now it's time for some giant anteater fun facts. Giant anteaters are related to sloths and armadillos. Their sense of smell is 40 times more powerful than humans. They have one of the lowest body temperatures for mammals at 91 degrees Fahrenheit. They're not immune to ant and termite bites so they only feed on a mound for a short time before moving on. Feel free to fill out the survey about whether a grizzly bear or a gorilla will win a, would win in a fight and why. You can find the link in the description or on my website or the Facebook page. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed it and want to hear more, feel free to subscribe to Alex's Animal Arc on YouTube or subscribe on Spotify, Deezer, Stitcher, Tune in, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Castro, Castbox, Podfriend, and iHeartRadio. Feel free to like and follow the Alex's Animal Arc Facebook page and visit my website by following the link in the description. If there is an animal you would like to hear me cover, please email your name and the animal you want to hear about to the email in the description and I will add it to the list or feel free or feel free to leave a comment on YouTube or on the Facebook page with an animal you would like to hear about, if that makes you feel more comfortable. Thank you for coming on this animal adventure. I will see you all again for the next voyage when we learn about the platypus.